Now we will tackle probably the most important and popular quantum algorithm, Shor's algorithm. This algorithm allows us to find the prime factors of a large number. So if we have a number n equals pq, where pq are both prime, Shor's algorithm allows us to find p and q. This may not seem very useful, but this is the backbone of RSA, which is a widely used type of encryption. So using Shor's algorithm, will allow us to crack RSA encryption. But that won't happen for a while. To run Shor's algorithm, we will need a fault-tolerant quantum computer with millions of logical qubits, which won't happen for some time. This algorithm uses both classical and quantum computers for different steps. First, we choose an A that is between 1 and N, and the GCD of A and N is 1. So, A and N share no common factors. Next we do the quantum step, but before that, we will look at some number theory. In modular arithmetic, we say that A is congruent to B mod N, if the remainder of A divided by N is B. For example, 3 is congruent to 1 mod 2, since dividing 3 with 2 gives a remainder of 1. We can reduce the factoring problem down into the problem of finding the period of modular exponentiation. Modular exponentiation is when you take the powers of a number modulo a number. Here is an example. As you can see, if we have a number, in this case 2, and put it to increasing powers, we get a repeating pattern when we take the modulo. The period of this pattern is the length of the sequence, and that is what we are looking for. In this case, the period r is equal to 6. All of the sequences start with a to the power of 0 is congruent to 1 mod n, so we need to keep increasing the power until we get back to 1. If we are able to find the period, we can use some number theory to find the prime factors. If we have a number n, which is equal to the product of two prime numbers, p and q, if we pick a number a, where the GCD of a and n is equal to 1, so they share no common factors, and we find the period of a to the x mod n, then, if we get a good approximation for r, the GCD of a to the power of r divided by 2 minus 1 and n, and the GCD of a to the power of n divided by 2 plus 1 and n, has a good chance of containing the factors of n. Let's go through the steps in finding the period of modular exponentiation. For this, we need to use this gate, let's call it u, which transforms the state x to the state xa mod n. If we apply this gate to the 1 state multiple times, we can get powers of a in mod n. How we construct this gate is outside the scope of this course. See the problem set for resources on how we can construct this gate. Let's consider this state, us. If we apply a u gate to the state, it gives us this state. Looking at the a to the r mod n, we can change this to a to the 0 mod n, since they are both 1. If we multiply the right hand side by 1, or e to the 2 pi i s over r, times e to the negative 2 pi i s over r, we get this state. We can change the e to the negative 2 pi i s r over r to e to the negative 2 pi i 0 over r, since they are both equal to 1. Now, as you can see, this whole state becomes the us state. This means that the us state is an eigenvector of the u gate with an eigenvalue of e to the power of 2 pi i s over r. This means that if we can construct the us state, we can use the quantum phase estimation algorithm to get the value of s over r. It turns out that it is far easier to construct the equal superposition of all of the us states. What this becomes is 1 mod n. In the problem set for this lesson, we will prove this result. We can construct the 1 mod n by applying a knot to the rightmost qubit in a register of all zeros, which gives us the value 1, which is equal to 1 in mod n. 
So by creating the state 1 mod n, we are actually creating the state 1 over root r times the sum from s equals 0 to r minus 1 of us. Here is the circuit for the algorithm. Looking at it, this is just the quantum phase estimation circuit. As you can see, we now know that 1 is an eigenvector of the U gate, so we are using this to estimate the eigenvalue e to the power of 2 pi i s over r, where s is an integer from 0 to r minus 1. This is because our eigenvector 1 mod n is equal to 1 over root r times the sum from s equals 0 to r minus 1 of u s. So we will get the eigenvalue e to the power of 2 pi i s over r for one value of s. So when we measure the qubits, we will get the eigenvalue of one of the us's, which means that we will get s over r for one s from 0 to r minus 1. If we happen to get 0 as our eigenvalue, so s equals 0, then we repeat the circuit so we can get an eigenvalue that is non-zero. Now we have a decimal number j, which is equal to s over r. That is the quantum part of the algorithm done. Now we estimate the values of s and r by using a technique called continued fractions. Here is an example with the decimal 0.312. We start by writing it as a fraction, then we flip the fraction. We continue this process until we have the number 1 in the numerator. By representing a decimal in this way, we can approximate its value with a fraction by rounding off the continued fraction. Here are the first three approximations for the decimal 0.312. To approximate s over r, we find an approximation where the denominator is less than n, since the period r must be less than n. If r is odd, then we repeat the algorithm and get a new value of r. Now that we have a value for r, we can use this to find the factors of n. We know that a to the r is congruent to 1 mod n, so a to the r minus 1 is congruent to 0 mod n. This means that a to the power of r minus 1 has a factor of n, since when we divide it by n, we get 0 remainder. If we factor a to the power of r minus 1 with the difference of 2 squares, then we get this. From this, we can see that if we calculate the GCD of a to the power of r over 2 minus 1 n, and the GCD of a to the power of r over 2 plus 1 and n, with our approximation of r, we have a good chance of them being one of the factors. This allows us to find p and q. Let's go through a quick example with n equal to 15. So p is 3 and q is 5. In step 1, we choose an a which is relatively prime to 15. Let's choose a equals 7. Now in step 2, we use the quantum part of Shaw's algorithm to find the period or r. So we need to find r such that 7 to the power of r is congruent to 1 mod 15. By using the algorithm, we find that r is equal to 4. Now we calculate the GCD of 7 to the power of 4 over 2 minus 1 and 15, and the GCD of 7 to the power of 4 over 2 plus 1 and 15. The first one becomes the GCD of 48 and 15, and the second becomes the GCD of 50 and 15. The GCD of 48 and 15 is 3 and the GCD of 50 and 15 is 5. As you can see, we have found the factors of 15, 3 and 5 using Shaw's algorithm.